Michelle Blair. If you can't hear Ms. Blair, let us know, okay? Um, is there any way you can turn the volume up on your end? Because I have to keep leaning down into the speaker to be heard. Okay. Are you saying you cannot hear us, Michelle? Michelle? Yeah. No, I can hear you fine. I'm saying can you turn it up so you guys can hear me because I have to keep leaning down so you can hear me properly. We have heard, we, we have heard volume up almost all the way. Okay, it's all the way up. From where you are right now, just don't lean forward. Just lean back. Sit up straight. Now just speak normal. Can you hear me good? Okay. 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 Uh, just for the record, uh, state your name again, uh, Ms. Blair. Michelle Blair. Okay. And do you understand the uh, hearing that we're in right now? Yes. And what type of hearing is it? place the children in the best possible environment, period, and permanently. Okay. Now you understand that you heard the testimony of Dr. Henry. That was this morning, correct? Yes. And you understand that the recommendation is for the termination of your parental rights? As it should be. I have never, I have never even had a desire to fight for my rights. I understand everything I've done. I've never denied anything. My rights should be taken. What I have been fighting for, and the only thing I've ever cared about, Michelle, is their rights. Let me ask a question, okay? I understand your, your anxious to get your, your rights taken away. Okay. Now, you understand that the trial and earlier there has been uh, an allegation that you prevented both of the fathers, Mr. Dorsey and Mr. Barry, from visiting. Is that true? As a total lie, I never prevented either of them from coming to see them. That was they were dead. Let's start with Mr. Dorsey. He is uh, Gabrielle's father, correct? Yes. And uh, did you, 
she ever lived with you and Gabrielle? Ever. And that was his big problem also in the beginning of why he disappeared in the first place. When did she first disappear? Um, I want to say when I moved out, Alexander Dorsey was so pissed that I wouldn't let him move in with me. He didn't come see Gabby, and she was a baby. Gabby was only nine months old. He didn't come see Gabby for months, months and months. Why? He couldn't understand the fact I did not want to be with him. I never stopped him from seeing her, though. Okay. Did you place any type of limitations on his parenting time? Never. I'm the one that used to call them. Let's, let's just, so that we can keep it straight, right now I'm, uh, all my questions are being directed towards Mr. Dorsey, okay? Okay. So, have you ever, did you ever place any limits whatsoever on his parenting time? No. And let's start after 2005. What was Mr. Dorsey's visitation? Um. People over there, when it started, they should start coming to get the kids. It will always be me having to initiate it. I would ask Gabby and Sonny, do you want to go over there? If they said yes, I called them. He would always have some excuse, oh, I don't have gas. When you started saying you don't have gas, I got someone, my neighbor, or I would give them gas to get the kids over there. So how often, I never, <laughs> how often would you say that Mr. Dorsey visited with uh, Sonny and Gabrielle? If go over there, I want to say, um, at one point, it was actually every weekend I would have them go over there. I would actually take them over there every weekend. Um, like I said, I would have to initiate it. He would try to back out saying, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. I bring them anyway. I'm saying, if they want to see you, what's the problem? You get what I'm saying? I've always tried to initiate that. Now, he couldn't us, understand. Give us a time frame. How old was Gabrielle? What do you mean? I said, how old was Gabrielle at that time? Um, I think she was eight. Okay. Within, let's bring it closer, within the last, say, four years, how often did Mr. Dorsey visit? Did you say four years? Within the last three to four years. It was crap. It was crap. And actually, from... 08, 09, and 2010, Alexander Dorsey didn't see them at all. We were only like 20 minutes away from each other. I would call, oh, Duke not here, Duke not here. And it, it was always crap. So I just got tired of trying and I just stopped. We would always have to be the ones initiation. At one point, I even stopped calling and told Gaggy, if you want to see him, you call. She got to run around. So we just stopped. You know what I mean? But when he finally popped back up, I never kept him away. My door was always open. There were never porch visits. When you said he popped back up, when did that take place? The first time he popped back up, um, I want to say in 2011, I forget around what time, whether it was summer, spring, or whatever, but he just, just showed up. And I'm like, so you, you realize they're not dead, they're alive, right? I was, that's what I always used to say to him. Everybody would be dead, you wouldn't even know it. That's kind of ironic. In light of what happened, but that's what I always said. You just you don't know what's going on with nobody over here. You care about us, but it, we argued. But he came in the house, and what I would do was either go upstairs, go in the back room. He talked to the girls for a second, and then and then he just has to just gravitate to where I am. And it's like you don't even come over to see them. You come to see what I'm doing. It's like I don't want to be bothered with him. So that's what we get into arguments when he came over. You never just fixate on the kids. You always got to come around me. And I'm saying, talk to the kids. Stay the hell out of my face. Did Mr. Dorsey ever provide you any type of support, monetary or otherwise? At one point, um, I think for a year straight, uh, it was child support being paid. That was for a year. Out of all the years they were alive, that was for a year. What now, when they say... The friends of court. And at that time, we hadn't even seen Alexander Dorsey. All of a sudden, it was just, I'm looking like, what is this? You get what I'm saying? It was child support the man. I'm like, oh, he must be working. We wasn't even seeing him at that time, so that was a surprise to me. And I actually went over there to tell him thank you, because I didn't know how that worked with the child support. I actually didn't put that on him. The uh, FIA did. So I actually went over there to thank him. You get what I'm saying? So it was... 
They just blame me for everything, and it's like it's an easy scapegoat for them. Now, you indicated in terms of, uh, you mentioned the porch visit. Did uh, Mr. Dorsey visit by coming uh, and visiting with uh, Gabrielle on the porch in your home? No, they did not, and that's the main reason why I wanted Gabby to be called, but once I heard she was nervous, I wasn't going to do that to her and make her get on the stand, but she could also verify that, but there were never any porch visits. That don't even sound right. Who would sit on the porch for an hour? Alexander Dorsey's ex-girlfriend, she said there were years of porch visits. First off, the last time she's ever seen them was in 2006. You get what I'm saying? 2006. So everybody's going to stand lying. There were never any porch visits. Okay. Now, what about Mr. Mr. Barry? What was his parenting time schedule, if there was one? It, there was never a, a parenting time schedule. Stephen also disappeared, but his was just like, Stephen will come around, like for, let's say, three days, three or four days, and then you don't see him again for seven, eight, nine months. Then he popped back up, and it's like, what the, you get what I'm saying? Just, he just comes back like, I remember he came in the door one day. One kid let him in. He's talking about daddy's home. Like it's a joke or something. You get what I'm saying? Miss Blair, the time, give us a time frame of when you're describing this. When did this happen? This has been, this has been all, okay, when we first had Stephen, even before Stephen, it was like, before we had the kids, he was always there. When it was just us, me, Gabby, Stoney, and him, he was always there. After Stephen came, I want to say he left three months later. He never got up. He never did anything for Matt. I mean, for, for Stephen. Never did anything. Never got up in the middle of the night. Never did anything. But one of his friends knocked on the door at 12 o'clock midnight. He out the door. Like a little kid. He never wants to just sit down and be a father. Okay, there was a period of time that Mr. Berry, uh, Yes. After, I believe it was in 2012, after his release. 2013. 13, thank you. Um, did he come to visit with uh, his kids? Well, first he sent a letter. He mailed a letter somewhere around in April, and he asked me to come see him. He was on a tether, and at that time, he couldn't leave at all. So I took Matthew over there, and we used to go over there a lot. Actually, I'm the one that even used to go to the grocery store for Stephen. So when he said that I never left him alone with Matthew, that's a lie. They were there for multiple times, over two hours with each other. Okay. On the vine hood. We used to always go over there and spend a night. When he was released, how long was he on tether, if you recall? Um, I, I think he got off a of tether, totally off a of tether, uh, August, but before that, he actually got time out, like you had to be in a house, like I want to say maybe three or four, he had to be back in the house or something, and he had to be on a work relief thing, so he would actually come over to the house every once in a while. You see what I'm saying? So it, how many times he asked about Stephen? Okay. I didn't have to keep saying Stephen was at my aunt, Stephen was at my aunt. He didn't ask about him like that. That wasn't Stephen's way. That's not how he is. When he was off tether, did he increase his parenting time? No, you barely saw Stephen. Um, I remember when I first tracked back up with Stephen, uh, actually Stephen Berry's attorney, who she called uh, Victoria Johnson, she actually took me out to Stephen Berry's, well, in Redford, where he's living right now on, I want to say, 2014, August 6th. I definitely remember that, but I couldn't find him. I know Matthew's birthday was coming up August 18th, and I wanted to find him. Like, well, are you? Are you going to be there for Matthew's birthday? He was home. Me and him started walking. Um, he thought Matthew's birthday was on August 16th, like he always did, but he was telling me, oh, I was out of town. And I'm like, what, what do you mean out of town? Basically, since he was a womanizer, when even in his own testimony said he went to Georgia with a friend. No. He went to Georgia to meet up with the female that he met online to have sex with for a month. That's the question. Thank you. Um.
questions have been asked with regards to your relationship with um, your aunt, Miss Ford. What type of relationship did you have? Um, my aunt is like a really loving person, and I don't appreciate Stephen Barry's lawyer trying to attack her character. What I will... Jeff, just my question. Okay. Right? What type of relationship okay. do you have with your aunt? It was kind of difficult for her. What does this have to do with the best interests of your life? As Ms. Anderson herself was going into it, trying to somehow slander the reputation of Ms. 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 Gordon, we have a right to go back and ask the person uh, who she was saying that allegedly Ms. Gordon should have known something. I can build into this from the best interest of where we believe the children should be as to what Ms. Gordon knew or didn't know and what the relationship between Ms. Gordon and Ms. Blair was. Well, the time is a proposed law to place and so to the extent it's supposed to the best interest, it's okay. Thank you. What was your relationship with your aunt? At one point, it was really good, but I can be honest about this fact. My auntie knew nothing, okay? And I actually purposely made it that way. Okay, um, you questions. You can't do a narrative with the, before this rule, okay? When did your relationship with your aunt change? After I found out about what Stephen was doing. Okay, and can you give me a time period for that? Um, that, was, that was in August. That was in August of 2012. Okay. And how did your relationship change? Well, I kind of stopped, well, I basically stopped talking to my aunt, period. Um, at one point, she used to come over every day. That's how she was. Like, she loved us. She loved all of us. Like, she checked for us. If one wasn't there, she was looking like, hey, we're upstairs. And I, she loved all of us. And I knew if anybody would know anything was wrong, it would be my aunt. So I purposely kept her away, meaning I was just nasty to her for no reason. You get what I'm saying? And it, it hurt her. That really hurt her because I know she missed me. She missed the kids, but she never stopped coming. She would knock on the door. Sometimes I would open the door like, what? You get what I'm saying? And it hurt me to do that to her because I love that lady, you know? But I made her feel basically like, she couldn't come. You get what I'm saying? But one thing I didn't have to do is I didn't have to do that with Alexander Dorsey and Stephen Barry because they were never around anyway. Okay. So that's why I took extra care to be that way with my aunt because she was the only one that would really know that something was not right. She, from the moment she walked in that house, she was looking for everybody. She loved us. The only person in my entire life who's ever loved us. Now, your uh, two children, Gabrielle and Matthew, are placed with your aunt. Do you believe that that's in their best interest? That would be in the best interest of any child to be placed in their home. Um, my auntie is one of the people, and my Uncle Daryl, she's just one of those people who just does what she's supposed to do, like just down to very small things, like her ethics, her work ethics, just everything about her. She's, for instance, um, I was playing around with Gabby one day. You know how you pat somebody on the back of the head? Like, I think Gabby said something to me. We were just joking around with each other. But she thought it was too rough, so she grabbed Gabby and she hugged her and rubbed the back of her head. Even though she knew me and her was playing, she goes, oh, my God, don't worry. You. What is this? you know, just she's real gentle. It's whatever it need, you needs to be met. You listened to the testimony of Dr. Henry this morning and the extensive needs of both of your children. She most definitely can. Whatever needs to be done, I don't care if she had to ride out to Timbuktu, she would get there. Auntie Angie would break her neck because as of right now, I know it's killing her inside because she's very worried about that future. And I know what's, what's got her the most is she want to make sure that heads are going to be right, basically, so they won't turn out like me. You know what I mean? My auntie is a very gentle person. She's even tempered. It's... There's no other place for them to be. And I'm in prison, so I don't understand what's the objection to them being with my aunt. It's not like they're going to have a communication with me. I'm in prison. You understand what I'm saying? My aunt is not. She's as pissed at me as everybody else is. Believe that. Okay. She wants the best for them in, in, like, in the worst way. Okay, Michelle, those are the questions I have for you. The other... Uh... Council may have questions, okay? 
Can I also just say something? Because this is about my character, right? The best interest. Matthew home. Stephen Barry would always ask me to come back, so I went back. 
but there was never consistency with Stephen Barry and Matthew. He barely even talked to him. And you said there were times when you left Matthew alone with Mr. Barry? Yes, I did. When I went to the grocery store, Stephen Barry. No, I was not. I was the only one abusing them. I never accused them of abusing their kids. I just said they were never there. They were deadbeats. Is it true that after Mr. Berry was off the tether, where he could travel about freely, did you restrict him or say he couldn't come into your home? Not true. Actually, he was there for a couple days, like I said earlier. Um, he asked about Stephen once. That was it, and he used to come over because our our house was close to whatever workforce program that uh, the parole thing obligated him to go to in the morning. So he would come to my house and then leave there in the morning. That only lasted for less than a month, and even when he was there, it was never about Matthew. I never stopped him from coming to see them ever. He and just disappeared. When he asked about Stephen, what did you tell him? And my was at my aunt. I told, I told him that he was at my aunt. All right, so you, you lied to him? Yes, I did. All right. Did he push it? No, he didn't. He asked me once. Do you know the difference between a truth and a lie? Objection. I just, I just told you I lied. Okay, I'm fine. Did you tell the school that Gabrielle and Matthew were not going to attend because you were moving? I did. And was that true? Um, I know the difference between the truth and a lie. I definitely lied. Okay. I told them that we were moving because Stephen was dead. August, I'm sorry, in September school would be starting. So, yes, I'm pretty sure they would have been looking for, like, why is Stephen missing school. So, yes, I told them that we weren't coming back because I was moving. So trying to blame the school, it had nothing to do with the school. I actually went through all the proper channels to drop them also. So it has nothing to do with the school. The fault is blamed on me. That's it. I know what I did. I'm admitting to everything I did. But you would not try to blame me for them dead not being there. Did you tell your friends, Ms. Johnson and Mr. Martin, that Stephen is still were up because they didn't like to be around other people? I did. I did. I can answer that. I did. Did you always inform him that he was at his aunt? 
Yes. He was saying, is he still over there? Did he ever probe the issue, meaning demand to see Stephen? No, oh, that's never how he was. Stephen has missed, I want to say, I don't even have to say how many he's missed. Let me tell you how many birthdays he's been there for. Two. He was only there for two of Stephen's birthdays. That's it. What about Maddie's birthdays? How many birthdays was he there for Maddie? One. One. Just one birthday. And when I used to say that he used to talk, he should talk to Matthew more, because Matthew used to have a really deep list. It was hard to understand what he said. Stephen Berry's words, that little nigga be all right. He's like, you know, I can't understand what he's saying. What's the point in talk? I can't understand him. So, no, he never talked to him. Anytime he came to the house, it was always me. He was gravitating around. That's it. And when Stephen would pick Matthew up, Matthew would try to squeam on his arms to reach back for me. He didn't know him. In terms of... Yes. And he actually stayed there for a month? Basically, not a month. I'm talking about on Vinewood is when we used to go over there. Right, but I want to talk about after he was released from prison in 2013. He came to your house where Stephen uh, and Stoney's bodies were, correct? Yes. The time after he was released from prison, Mr. Berry, and he came to your home, did he ever, once he was inside your home, go upstairs to look for Stephen or anything of that nature? No. How many times, Even when Stephen, how many times would you say he had been to your house after he was released from prison up until May of 2015? Or March of 2015, excuse me. I want to say five or six, and some of those, some of some of five or six, and some of those were consecutive days back to back. What I want to ask you, because there's, was Mr. Barry ever in your home in 2015? No. Was he in your home December of 2014? December? Yes. No. No. Okay. No. Right. No. Nobody. We've never seen Stephen on the Christmas, even when they were alive. And when he said that he spent his, his money, I sent Stephen $470 while he was incarcerated. He never even wrote Stephen once or responded back to any of Stephen's letters. Stephen sent him eight letters. Stephen never wrote anything back to him. He never bought a phone card. All he did, he basically, those tattoos that he had, a tattoo on his neck and on his chest. He got those while he was in prison. He, that's what he used the money for that I sent him. Not to get phone cards, to get prison tattoos and keep his hair braided and get snacks. That's what he spent the money on. We had no contact with him the whole time he was incarcerated. So when he says that he sent, he worked to send, no, he spent every bit of his commentary. He spent every bit of his money on commentary. In terms of Mr. Dorsey, after uh, Stoney's death in 2013, did he ever ask about her? Yes. Yes. And he, he never probed. Push. Yes. Did he ever come to her, your house after she was murdered? Yes. And he even said that in the news interview. He would sit. Our table was by the freezer. He would sit at the table with me and Gabby or just Gabby, and they'd talk for a minute. He didn't come a lot, but, yes, it wasn't It wasn't like he come in looking for, for Sony. I didn't, like I said, the only one that I felt that I had to really push away was my aunt because she's the only one that would have known something was wrong. I didn't have to do that with Stephen and Alexander because they wasn't going to push, and I know that.
battery's good. Oh, they're going to be close on the podium. On the podium? Thanks, Your Honor, for being patient. Thank you, Your Honor. Sounds like we're getting some interference on that. Though. Yeah, I think because it's so loud. It's up so loud or something. Maybe. Yeah, that could be why.
Anderson and Mr. Berry. I'll step out. Judge me. Did you want to do that? Or not? I was about to let you know. It, it's just the worker is saying that the Miss Blair wants to speak to her attorney. I don't know what it is. Miss Blair, do you need to speak to your attorney? 